So let's say uh, you have an ambassador car, Ferrari, super fast Ferrari and a truck and these three vehicles are, uh, are on a flat and slippery surface. So again I repeat flat and slippery surface and let's say there is a race among these three vehicles. So which one do you think will win the race? Will it be the old and the sort of now obsolete ambassador or the super fast Ferrari or the super heavy truck? So in this video we will try to find the answer to this question. So I have created another video where I have covered the mechanics of uh, the movement of a car or any vehicle on the road. The role of friction, rotational motion, linear motion. So I would recommend please watch that video because a lot of the concepts I uh, will be borrowing from that video in this video. But I will summarize uh, you know, what I have covered in that video. So. So let's kind of, uh, so, so again, uh, all each of these three vehicles will be in contact with the road through its tires, right? So let's uh, draw the free body diagram of the tire of the vehicle. So if we draw the free body diagram, so uh, what, I mean, what will be the forces and the torque which will be acting on, on, on the tire? So let's take one tire and let's assume that uh, this one tire is reflective of all the four tires. So there will be the weight of the tire, I mean of the vehicle, then there will be normal reaction from the ground and there will be a torque from the engine because the engine will, when you would press the accelerator, there would be a torque from the engine so which will uh, make the wheel rotate and as the wheel will rotate, uh, there will be a force of friction which will resist the rotation of the wheel. So this force of friction will be in the opposite direction. Uh, to the impact of torque, so the force of friction will be in that direction, in the, like in like in this direction, and it is the force of friction which makes the vehicle move. So this is what we had seen in the previous video. Now we uh, also learned that uh, uh, this force of friction is less than or equal to mu n. So mu n is the maximum value of force of friction. But force of friction from the beginning itself will not be equal to mu n. So force of friction in the beginning when the vehicle is at rest will be zero. And as you apply torque and you gradually increase the torque, the force of friction will also increase. And as you increase torque further, the force of friction will increase further till the force of friction reaches this value mu n where the force of friction value will become constant and the force of friction value will not move further. Right. So the important thing to understand here is that there are two phases in the movement of the vehicle. One phase, phase 1 when the force of friction is less than or equal to mu n and phase 2 when the force of friction becomes equal to mu n. Now when will uh, those, when, when will uh, uh, you know phase 1 shift to phase 2? So that will shift when, you're, when, the, when the torque which you apply on the wheel that becomes so high that the vehicle starts to skid. Right. So this red point which you see here is the point at which the vehicle is in contact with the ground. Right. Now if you increase the torque then the rotational I mean, uh, impact of the torque becomes very high. I mean, when you increase the torque the, the rotational impact increases not, not very high, it increases. Now, as we keep on increasing the torque the rotational uh, impact goes on increasing, increasing, increasing till it reaches a point in which at which this this the like you know this wheel starts to skid. So now, if you want to visualize this, so you can visualize this uh, by uh, visualizing a you know a, a car or any a bike, which you must have seen a car or a bike getting stuck on a muddy road, wherein you must you you are applying a lot of torque and you are giving lots of uh, you know uh, accelerate acceleration to the vehicle, but the wheel starts to skid. Right, the, the vehicle doesn't move at a faster pace. Right. So that is called skidding, when, when this point P starts to uh, skid on the ground. So the moment this point P starts to skid on the ground, that's when force of friction reaches the maximum value, which is equal to mu n. Before skidding, force of friction will be less than or equal to mu n. It will increase, it will try to counterbalance the torque, but it will try to uh, remain less than or equal to mu n. But when skidding starts, force of friction becomes equal to mu n. Now, we have seen the mathematical uh, calculations in the previous video and we have seen that pre-slipping uh, the acceleration, the linear acceleration of the car is given by, will be 2 by 3 torque divided by MR. 
mass times radius. So to put it simply, uh, forget 2 by 3 mr. The I mean, what you need to remember is that before slipping, the acceleration is dependent on torque. So the higher the torque, the higher the acceleration, and the faster will your car move. So that's what that's what we see, right? Uh, on the norm, when we drive a normal car, when we accelerate uh, the vehicle, the vehicle moves fast. What happens when we accelerate? We basically increase torque, so the acceleration increases and the velocity increases. So what? Now, if you again, if you want to put some mathematical uh, formula to the velocity, then what will be the velocity? So let's say the acceleration is two by three torque mr. Uh, so the, the velocity will be, it will be, so we know that uh, uh, um, acceleration is equal to dv by dt, rate of change of velocity with time. So what will be the velocity? Velocity will be equal to integration of acceleration times dt, 0 to t, right. And if acceleration is constant, then velocity becomes equal to at. Now here, uh, I mean I have put the integral form of velocity because our acceleration is increasing, our acceleration is not constant. So the more, more you apply torque, the acceleration would increase, right. So the velocity will be 2 by 3, uh, this term, right. So don't get into the mathematics, just, just see that velocity is a function of torque and that you need to integrate from, from 0 to t. Now what happens when slipping happens or skating happens, then at that time what will happen? We know that the force of friction will become equal to mu n, mu mg. And so the linear acceleration of this vehicle would be force of friction by m, which will be equal to mu mg by m, which will be equal to mu g. And you can see the, these derivation in the last video. So the acceleration you see is constant, right? So post slipping, when the skating starts, the acceleration becomes constant. And, it, as, and you can see here pre slipping, the acceleration is not constant. The acceleration increases, increases with torque. But, uh, but, but beyond a point, when the torque goes beyond a particular point, then the, I mean, when the torque goes beyond a particular point, then the vehicle, the, I mean, the vehicle will start to rotate much, I mean, the tire will start to, will, uh, will rotate at a much more higher pace and because of that, the vehicle will start to skid. So when the vehicle starts to skid, acceleration will become constant. Now when the acceleration becomes constant, what will be the velocity? Velocity will be equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times t. And uh, what will be the initial velocity? So the initial velocity will be the velocity till till the vehicle starts to skid, right? That's the velocity, right? That's the velocity when the vehicle starts to skid plus the the velocity after the vehicle starts to skid, which will be acceleration times t. So again, just to avoid confusion, so velocity when the vehicle starts to skid will be v is equal to u plus at. And uh, at that point, the acceleration will become constant, right? So, so you can visualize velocity something like this. So let's say this is v, and let's say this is t. So, so, so initially, the velocity will increase, increase, increase. At that instant, skidding will start. When skidding starts, then the the rate of change of increase of velocity becomes constant. Here you see pre-skidding, the rate of increase of velocity is not constant. Velocity is increasing at a higher pace with respect to torque. Now, the, when, when torque becomes very high, then uh, force of friction becomes maximum, which is mu n, and at that, beyond that instant, the rate of increase of velocity becomes constant. So, this is what this term is capturing, v is equal to u plus at. So, u here is the velocity at this instant, when slipping starts. So, what will be the velocity at that instant? That will be, this is this term, right? This, this is basically this term, when the integration happens from 0 to the time when skidding starts. So, this time this this is this a time when the skidding starts this is ts this is ts so velocity uh, at a time which is more than ts that will be velocity at the time when skidding starts plus the constant acceleration into 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 time right into this time this time is t minus ts right this time is t minus ts right so this is any time t this is any time t so this is how the velocity we are getting. So again to summarize, pre-slipping acceleration is, is, is depends on torque and post-slipping acceleration is constant. Now if you want to draw plot acceleration versus torque, then you can see pre-slipping acceleration will be, will vary, will vary linearly with torque and then when the vehicle starts to slip, 
the acceleration will become constant, which will be mu g. And velocity we have seen, right? This is this is what the velocity will be. Now, so now let's come back to our original question. So if this is how the velocity will behave uh, when a vehicle moves on a ground on the ground, so what, who will win the race on a flat, slippery surface? Will it be ambassador, Ferrari, or truck? So first let's uh, understand when we say what do we mean when we say flat, slippery surface? So when we say slippery surface, we mean that uh, the the friction on the surface is very low and it is flat so beyond these forces there are no other forces like if the surface was not flat then your tire would be would roll on the surface then you know besides the weight and normal reaction there would be a component of the weight which will be in this direction and then there will be a force of friction so the component of weight in this direction will impact the motion but when the surface is flat then this is the free body diagram, right? So there will be no, so the, the, the there will be no impact of weight on the on on the rotation. Uh, uh, you know, I mean there will be uh, an impact of weight indirectly on the rotation because force will depend on n and n depends on will depend on w, but uh, but in a, on a flat surface n and w will be equal, right? Whereas on a on a, on a slant surface. There will be a component of weight which will uh, which will move the vehicle uh, which will which will assist in moving the vehicle linearly along with the friction. So that's the difference. So that's why we are assuming a flat surface. So there is no component of weight in the in the linear direction. So all the the entire weight is in downward direction. So weight is not contributing. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, weight is uh, like uh, not. There is no component of weight which is contributing directly in the linear motion of the tire though again i am repeating weight has a contribution because weight is indirectly contributing to friction uh, which is leading to linear motion but that is an indirect contribution anyway so we have a flat surface and the slippery surface when i say slippery surface then the force of uh, i mean the coefficient of friction is very low so mu mu is very very small right so now when mu is very very small what does it mean when mu is small then uh, you know this so this acceleration this is mu g right this acceleration is mu g but when mu is small you see when mu is less here then skidding will start here when mu is further less then skidding will start here right so skidding starts here in this case skidding starts here in this case skidding starts here so now you can see as mu decreases, as mu decreases, uh, even at a very low torque, skidding will start, right? Even at a very low torque, skidding, skidding will start. So when mu will become very low, then it means that at a very low torque, the vehicle will start to skid, right? So this is very important. So when you have a very slippery surface, then when you apply a very less torque also, the vehicle will start to skid. So what happens when you apply a less torque? Then at that less torque itself, force of friction becomes maximum which is mu n and the vehicle starts to skid. So let's say we have this flat slippery surface in which the vehicle starts to skid the moment you apply a very small torque then which one will win the race? The ambassador will win the race, the Ferrari will win the race or the truck will win the race. So uh, when you have a flat and slippery surface as we saw this time Ts when the vehicle starts to, to skid is very low. right? So this, 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 this term of velocity so the velocity uh, you know has two components right one is this component one is this component so this component which is 2 by 3 tau dt by mr this integral 0 to ts this ts is very small so when this ts is very small then this term actually becomes very small so maybe this term can be practically ignored right and if when ts becomes very small then this term also can be ignored so in that case effectively your velocity becomes mu g t right so when the velocity becomes mu g t then you see velocity is independent of torque independent of mass right so for all the three vehicles the velocity will remain same because mu will be same for uh, for all the three vehicles g is same and time is t right so it this shows that uh, uh, all the three vehicles will move practically at the same speed so it doesn't matter whether you are driving a Ferrari or a truck or an ambassador, all three would move at the same speed, right? 
So here we have made the assumption that this TS is very small, but I mean technically uh, if TS becomes very small and equal to zero, then the vehicle will not move at all because then there will be no friction. It's a frictionless surface, right? So the moment you put the accelerator, the vehicle starts to skid. So when that happens, there will be no friction and the vehicle will not move at all. But in our case, there will be slight friction, but 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 you know uh, the uh, the friction will be so low that the time it takes for the vehicle to skid is not zero, but it's very less, maybe less than a second, maybe 0.5 millisecond, right? So uh, when TS is 0.5 millisecond, still this term will be low, but technically not zero. But given this term will be low, so practically all the three would appear to move at the same speed, uh, right? So so yeah, so the, the key point to take to note over here is that uh, you know how the force of friction plays an important role uh, in the movement of the wake. So, so hope uh, this concept of friction, rotational motion and and uh, you know the whole mechanics behind the movement of a vehicle would be more clear to you. So, thank you. Thanks for watching.